Hi, I'm Chelsea. Hi, I'm Alexis. And we're going to talk about Zim. Okay, so Rise of the Zit Boy. This is another one of the ones where if you watch it around the uninitiated, you have to have the barf bags out. I'm initiated, and I think this is disgusting. (laughs) First off, as much as fun as it might be to blame everything that happens on this show on Jonin, this one's written by Roman Dirge and Frank Conniff. And Roman Dirge, most Zim fans will already recognize, and he did a lot of work on the show. And uh, Frank Conniff is TV's Frank from MST3K. Oh. Well, no wonder he's so funny. Yeah. So... This one, this one's all on those two. <laughs> yeah. Just even the opener of this episode is very funny. It's it's the, the chickens getting shot into space. <laughs> so the first chicken just gets shot out towards the sun, and the second chicken is watching it on the screen, like, panicking as Zim slowly does just his... Hmm, hmm, and, he, and this is a thing that me and Alexis do a lot. <laughs> it's like, if one of us says, hmm, and we're, we're not in a moment of actual duress, the other one might just go, hmm, hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to fill in the gaps while thinking. Oh, of course. This is another good example of one of the things the show does best, which is it's build with tension. That Zim is doing something completely absurd, but horrifying. He just shot a chicken into space and is watching it orbit. We don't know what information Oh, he's... I think he's shooting it into the sun. No, you see it like the trajectory... I thought it was going into the sun. Like, it was slowly approaching the sun. <laughs> oh, we have to pull it back. Oh, God. Um, really? <laughs> no, no. Well, uh, he, Zim is shooting chickens into space, and we, we do not know exactly what he's getting from it, but he's very fascinated by this. But we see the one chicken careening through space on his, like, radar, and then he turns and looks at the other chicken, finger hovering over the button. It's so good, because he's about to murder a living being for no reason, but it's shooting chickens into space, which is inherently funny, and it's building and building, and then there's a security breach. It's just, mmm, so good. (laughs) Okay, so, um, of course, as he goes to investigate the security breach, Dib is wearing a giant porcelain squirrel, as we all do when we're trying to infiltrate alien security systems. That is not one of your better disguises, Dib. I like that it takes him a minute to decide that this is not a <laughs> fake squirrel. And then, uh, and then he, like, literally breaks apart, which is just very funny to watch and viscerally funny to hear as a porcelain squirrel breaks apart. Good sight gag with the the tail, like, still being attached to his butt. (laughs) Yeah. Squirrel dib. (laughs) I mean, we talked about before that Planet Jackers doesn't have a shirt-worthy quote, but I'll be in there doing stuff is a shirt-worthy quote. All the the way, all the way home. Yeah, if they made made shirts for dib. If they did that. If they did make shirts for dib, there would be a shirt that had, I'll be there doing doing stuff. stuff. And then Zim saying, you have to do your stuff elsewhere. (laughs) I don't know. Did Membrane have that one lying around? Because, I don't know. Squirrel suit could equally be made by father or son. And I could potentially see Dib... Dib hand-fired that squirrel suit. (laughs) (laughs) He was was an afternoon in pottery class. I know, right? (laughs) Um, Of course, their art teacher has a giant room-sized kiln. Oh my god. I, I had a moment of, there's no way an art teacher could exist in the Invader Zim universe, but you're totally right. The um, whole art room would be like a kiln. The rooms, the, the room-sized kiln wherein, you know, some children may or may not have been killed in this room-sized kiln. You know, this is all canon, obviously. I'm, I'm not making any of this up. Well, if I, if I ever wanted to s- submit a spec script for a comic. True that. But I, I think that this one is one of those... Dib flaws where he continually cannot keep it to himself. He could have just been like, when Zim said, you'll you'll not be able to get in because there's no flaw in my security. <laughs> and Dib says, well, let's just say your security needs a little bit of tightening. And at that point in time, he screwed himself over because all you needed to do was spy on Zim and not tell him about the flaw in his security. But he's Dib. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, again, the hubris of these two chaps... <laughs> He should have just been like, oh, woe is me, until 
He'll learn to do that later, but not yet. Not yet. He learns humility at some point in time. His soul has... His soul, surprisingly, has not yet been crushed. And then... Oh, man. And then then Gurr does some of his finest Gurr work. He gets a pizza delivered. Classic Gurr. Oh, no, I mean, the other part is the contrast of saying, there's no flaw in my security as he runs away. And the pizza. A pizza is literally delivered into his front door, right next to him as he walks past. Just a teenager walking it up. But yeah, Gurr gets the pizza, hops on the couch, rips open the edge, pours it out, rips it in half, and then the whole thing just dripping, smoothly flips it in the air, and it lands grease everywhere on his face. I don't... And he lets it slide into his mouth. <laughs> The animation there is so good. It's And then Zim nearly vomits watching, <laughs> which honestly I cannot blame him for. It's disgusting. It's like, oh, oh, this is gross. That cheese and your little lippy smacky noises aren't helping. That's that's AS that's some good ASMR right there. Zim. <laughs> Alexis, no. Alexis, no. And YouTubers not, will pay good money for that ASMR. Uh not Never, ever talk. <laughs> yeah, so maybe maybe Zim's lactose intolerant if he doesn't like cheese. I mean, this is really more like a grease situation, maybe, but... Oh, oh yeah. I mean, they take the time to not only show, like, the goopiness of the cheese, but in the show's continual adoration of filth, they show... The grease. And I mean, the grease is plot important, because Gurr has to be completely greasy so he can roll around on Zim's face and give him a zit. Man, Urkin bodies are not optimized for Earth. Not even close. Well, I mean, they did send him here to die, so... (laughs) Yeah, if if only they'd known that there was so much on Earth that could kill an Urkin. It's a very unpleasant planet for them. (laughs) <laughs> this scene, it just, it just keeps getting grosser and grosser. It's, it's disgusting. Amazing. It's disgusting. Like, her immediately latches onto Zim and rolls around on his face. Zim immediately develops a pimple. No, and he doesn't develop the pimple. Er, he's just covered in grease. Oh, yeah, he's covered in grease, and he screams for cleansing chalk, and some, there's been some talk in the past over whether it's human soap, or that's a type of Urkin soap, but one way or another, like, he calls it soap as well, so, I don't know, he does like to stay clean, so maybe soap is soap no matter what. He rubs it, scrubs it right into his face. Gurr picks up on on the frenzy that Zim is in and rubs the, <laughs> rubs the, the pizza box all over his face. He, like, jumps him. into the pizza box and just puts it over his head. But, like, Zim's doing his, and Gurr immediately goes, just going nuts. Zim looks in the mirror. He is worse off than before. And then holds the soap, and it unfurls. And It's uh, a roll of bacon. Everybody's favorite line, and with good reason, you know, why was there bacon in the soap? And Gurr, half in the pizza box, just screams, I made it myself! And... That's all you really need. There's there's no why. Then Zim discovers the pimple. We get the acne blast commercial with uh, Marston Watch 2017. Chelsea, Jason Marston's biggest fan. Yeah, as we'll, we'll, we'll point him out whenever he's on the show. <laughs> oh, he, I think he was the Blody's delivery guy, too. Yes, he was. He's <laughs> background in a lot of these. I think he's one of the kids at school, too, and... You know, he's, mm-hmm. he's in a various uh, minor roles in this yeah. one. And this horrible, horrible pimple on that guy. And the acne blast really, it really seems to hurt when he uses it. Just like anything in this show. If something happens to a person, it generally involves some form of pain. Well, I mean, at least this one's beneficial pain, I suppose. Well, like, even if you want to do something good for yourself, it involves screaming pain. Zim... You know, being being the consumerist little being he is, sees a commercial for a thing and immediately believes it will solve his problems, <laughs> like the commercial told him. And he's like, I need it. I need this, yeah. ac- the acne blaster. And 
Gurr already has it because, of course, Gurr just buys everything he sees on TV. Yeah, Gurr's already seen this commercial. Oh yeah, he he, he shows it. He, he shows it to him. Like he has it on demand because <laughs> he's keeping DPR. <laughs> yeah. the Acne Plast commercial. He, he has he has a, a carefully recorded copy of his favorite commercials. To be fair, it is his favorite show. <laughs> it, it's not on screen for like. Two seconds before he has put the tube in his mouth and is sucking on it. I don't think Gert eats enough stuff that isn't food on this show. He eats a lot of food and a lot of weird food combinations, but there's not enough of him drinking, like, zit fluid. (laughs) But yeah, Zim immediately puts it in there and then what was... At least a normal size looking pimple swells up to the size of a fist. And, and it's, it's absorbed it. It absorbs the two. And he looks away and then Gurr is swimming. In it. So gross. Why? <laughs> they even have a moment for Zim to go, this is so not right. Yeah. <laughs> The voice of me in the in this in this situation. This is so not right. I am because I'm not normally the type for gross out humor either. I mean, I, it, it's 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 good in in you know measurements, but it's never like a garbage ki- pale kid sort of thing. But this is I don't know. It's just I don't think it's just because it's gross. Again, they make it horrifying and absurd, and they really don't let you shy away from just like. How ridiculous the whole situation is. So, Gurr draws a face on the pimple, and then, as as many experts ha- have mentioned it, in the field of hypnosis, of course that causes a hypnotic effect. Of course. I mean, that's exactly what hypnotism is like. and It uh, works instantly, accurately. And as we all know, this show is extremely accurate. It's very realistic. This is really the most cliched episode we get of Invader Zim. I mean, the hypnotizing classmates with, I don't know, maybe it came from here? A hypnotic zit. Yeah, I I mean, I feel like I've seen this plot a million times. I don't know. I think it was pretty common, especially in, like, the early Nicktoons days, and this is kind of later Nicktoons. Ah. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) they definitely ripped it off of Angry Beavers in the episode where... (laughs) (laughs) You know, if... uh, (laughs) To be honest, uh, if I, any of the other Nicktoons was, say, yeah, was going Andrew to have a plot like this. No, our real monsters could have had this plot too. We had some good uh, cartoons Yeah, yeah, then. it could have. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm totally thinking about in Angry Beavers, like the... The stanky the, toe. The, the stanky toe. If this is this is actually not, not too... It definitely reeks of stanky toe. <laughs> <laughs> we have to banish it because it reeks of stanky toe. <laughs> Man, this episode is... To be a fly on the wall when they came up with that concept. I guess I should have said, like, the classic My Little Ponytails episode <laughs> where they had a hypnotizing Sith. <laughs> All the other ponies were hypnotized, and, and, uh... It was really uh, inspiring how at the end she finally got her cutie mark, and it was the hypnotizing no, Sith. Cutie marks is from New new Ponies. I was gonna tell you, Lickety Split... She she realized she could hypnotize the other ponies, and she had to learn a lesson and sing a song about how you shouldn't hypnotize other ponies with your zits. Is, is Lickety Split a real pony? Yes. Oh. Yes, Lickety Split is a real pony. Mm. Mm. Clover is also a real pony. Oh, no, this is not a bit we're doing right now. We are not naming the names of ponoids. There's Bright Eyes. No! And uh-uh, uh-uh. This stops here. And Patch. No! Patch? Yeah, Patch. I'm naming the My Little Pony Tales characters, which are, I, like, I oh, honestly, no. people will probably roast me on a spit for even knowing it. I mean, that was a trash cartoon, and I will not, I will not defend it at all, but I sure as heck watch it. <laughs> anyway, let, let's get back to our wholesome family entertainment, where an alien demolishes a classroom full of children with a hypnotic zit. We get a a fun little tutorial on how the zit works with uh, Gurr actually listening to orders for once, which Zim even acknowledges is outside the the ordinary. I mean, that's how he knows that this works. This this does set up a rule that people are only hypnotized while looking at the zit, which doesn't follow for later. Although, 
Plus, Julio's little body is pretty cute, so maybe that, like, adds to the appeal or something. Because otherwise, I'd say, why are you even bothering, like, why do you need a cover story for your hypnotic zit? If you're going to brainwash people, just immediately brainwash them and you're good. Zim goes down into the basement and gets out his... Good old box of headless bodies. (laughs) His box of of gears, circuits, and headless bodies. I don't know what you guys keep in your basement, but that sure as heck is what's in ours. Well, you gotta keep them around. I mean, you never know when you're gonna need to put a a body on a zit. Pastelio's character design is so cute. I mean, once the little body is on there, if they they ever want to, like, full force merchandise more of Invader Zim stuff... That should be a plush, you there, know? There's really not enough Invaders in merchandise out there already. <laughs> I certainly, for one, have almost <laughs> never seen it on a store shelf. There's not enough non gur merch. Okay, I know. I'm just making a joke. Listen, I should have been the target. O- I was. I I have a lot of old Invaders in shirts in my wardrobe. Alexis, you, you sure do. And believe it or not, I have to look at your sorry face and body every day. And you don't even switch them out, considering we have so many. Anyway, back to the show and not my sorry Zim life. I'm just going to cut all the parts where you talk out. <laughs> <laughs> like, leave leave it. It'll just be me talking about my great thoughts and You'd do feelings. that anyway. Uh, yeah, obviously. So he goes there, hypnotizes the entire class. Later on, he's going to call them the collective, which is so good. He says it without even a thought. Dib notices that something's going on and rushes over to Gaz for help. Gaz won't listen to him. But to be fair, Gaz will also not look up from her Punch Club book to look at the the zit. And Zim moves on pretty quickly because Gaz is not going to get involved. Yeah, here's the thing. I think that Gaz would actually find it pretty refreshing to have all of her classmates shut up and not talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she's into this plan, this I'm sure. the best recess she's had in years. Yeah, I, I have no idea if she did or didn't notice. It doesn't really matter, though, because if she did notice, she would not intervene. Yeah. <laughs> Dip just comes charging into the classroom, <laughs> screaming at everybody because he sucks at diplomacy, too. He's trying, he's trying to tell them, like, you're being tricked, you have to look away! <laughs> and of course, not really his best moves, obviously. You know, you could go more subtle, but he's not really a subtle guy. It's just not how he rolls, for the most part. He still thinks that he can hero it up and save the day. It's, it's, uh, it's very adorable. Poor kid. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah the, the one, the one note to, to make, one of the funniest lines... I think in the whole show, where Zim says, <laughs> oh, you'll open them, you have to breathe sometime, and Dib just cannot resist asking, what do my eyes have to do with breathing, and then opens his eyes to say that. But of course, I think that that uh, is one of those things where, of course, it's just rule of funny, just as much as you want it to be, but we could say that maybe Erkin's eyes have something to do with their breathing abilities, we don't know. Also, I love how Dib can't resist being melodramatic even in a situation like this. He should just close his eyes and then just sit there. It could be fine, but he has to turn it into a struggle of, No! No! You can't make me! You can't stop! Open one eye slowly just to make it a fight! Like, just because he has to fight, you know? Also really fun transition when he first looks at Pastulio. We like zoom in and out and everything to kind of give a little bit of that hypno focus, I guess, on there. They go into the the world of, of spirals, blacks and blues, you know, well documented amongst, again, amongst uh, hypnosis experts. Obviously. Again, accurate to a T. If, if somebody tries to tell you that's not how hypnosis works then they're just lying. I mean, honestly, they're lying just so they can hypnotize you. <laughs> You've got to be careful. They will hypnotize you if they get even the... Oh, they try to be accurate, and they'll tell you about how hypnosis actually works. This is all just a ploy so that when real hypnosis comes along, they can trick you. Well, I mean, Zim demonstrates, like, a perfect technique. He says something incorrect to try to get you to be confused and look over... And then they got you. Oh, yep. See, there you go. 
<laughs> I just want to let everybody know that as the zip popped and Pip was like sitting there floating, like s- s- spraying it out of his mouth, Chelsea honestly shrieked with with terror and disgust. It's disgusting. She was actually like let out a scream. No, God, <laughs> why? <laughs> All right. The point is, this is gross. <laughs> And the other point is, this one is, it's it's a win for Zim episode. I guess I'd say oh, yeah. that this yeah. one's a Zim pro tag and Zim, Zim win. Yes. I mean, he doesn't get very far with this plan because the thing is, he could have used this hypnotism to his greater advantage had it not gone away. And I don't think that he wouldn't have exploited it further, but he exploited it to the point where he could get something he needed and he did get what he needed. Mm-hmm. And then, well, he kind of lost it after that. The the line, I'm going to go plant a few new lawn gnomes, is funny. But that He did literally plant his house, so it makes enough sense that that's how it works. Yeah, I, I feel like they're probably connected to an underground wire system, mm-hmm. so that would make sense if you think of it as being planted. Yeah, yeah. The, the shots of... Like, the zit popping and, like, the geyser, like a fire hydrant from his face. As he, like, spins around uncontrollably, <laughs> shooting it everywhere. The, the, the windows explode out. We get the torrent of rushing <laughs> buzz through the hallway as the waves crash. Man, that is lovingly depicted. Oh, God. And... A good bitter's arrival that Dib's shadow kind of grows out from behind him up the wall and then she materializes. That one's cool and just bluntly supernatural. Oh, maybe the because the windows were broken, the sun was coming in, and so she kind of had to hide in a shadow. Oh, that's not a bad thought. Not a bad thought. And another just unnecessarily mean, like, this one's almost a letdown in how just simply petty it is. That just for no reason, Dib has to clean it all up, and he has to use a tiny sponge. Again, here's the thing. I really don't know if it's unnecessarily her blaming Dib. Pre-Zim being here, Dib was still like he is. He's still <laughs> Dib, and is pretty much a weird kid who would accuse random people of being monsters or or yetis or zombies. And for obvious reasons, he probably accused Bitters many a time of being a vampire, oh, evil yeah. shadow beast. And so, yeah, she probably definitely punishes him specifically because he's dip. Yeah, this show definitely takes place post some form of dib harassing Bitters. There's no way he wouldn't have let that one... She hates... She hates all the kids, but she hates Dib especially. Yes. The violins at the end are are pretty fun that that Manthe does there. The whole school is just completely trashed, and Zim just walks out. Yeah, this was a very non-traditional school day here, because all the kids were kind of out for recess. I mean, that's my imagining of what was going on. And... Zim led them all into the classroom in order to, I guess, corral them. Or maybe to because he wanted to go inside and, and start hypnotizing teachers. I don't know what his whole deal was. I mean, he really wanted to get Dib to look at Postulio to find out the security flaw. But I'm sure he was going to escalate his plan after that. You know, from, from Dib's perspective, because none of the kids seem to remember their hypnotized actions, Dib was kind of staring down Zim, trying not to look at Postulio, fighting back, and then he wakes up and everything is gross. I don't think that that's something he's not used to, though, so I'm (laughs) guessing that's why he was pretty much taking it in stride. I mean, he wasn't really thrilled about having to clean up the whole school, but really all he asked for was getting to use a bigger sponge. You know, Dib's probably dealt with, like, you know, gross stuff before from his dad's lab and from looking into supernatural stuff. So I'll bet that he looked at this and he's like, this is pretty bad, but it's not the worst thing I've had to clean up. And at least I can get like alien DNA samples off of this. That's true. Maybe that's his thoughts. So 
you know what? Dib did lose this one, but maybe it's not his. It's not his worst failure ever. You have such a bias. 